Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today we are going to be figuring out what is density and how does that relate to buoyant force and specific gravity. All right, so let's start with the density and specific gravity. Density is, by definition, they call it rho, is equal to mass divided by volume, which really kind of just means like how much stuff is crammed into an object. A metal cube is going to weigh a whole lot more than a cube that is made out of styrofoam. All right. And with specific gravity, specific gravity is going to be representing, they call it SG, it will tell you the percent of an object below the water or below the fluid that it is in, which is kind of neat. That means that if you have a specific gravity that is, you know, a decimal, let's say it equals 0.75, that means that 75% is going to be below the water. Versus if you have a specific gravity that is 1.05, that means that the object that you had that was in the water was more dense than the water. And if it's more dense than the water, it will sink, okay? And that's not good for things that you would like to float, all right? So specific gravity is going to tell you the percent of an object that is below the water. There is a formula for specific gravity. Specific gravity is essentially equal to the density of the object divided by the density of the fluid. And that will typically be water in most situations. All right, well, that's all fun and games. But how does this relate to the buoyant force? Well, the buoyant force for floating objects will equal the weight of that object. So that is an important thing, that the force of buoyancy that you recognize for floating objects is equal to mg. And for sunken objects, it is equal to rho vg, the volume of displaced water. Okay, so that volume of displaced water when it is floating is going to be equal to the percentage of the object that was underneath the water, which means that you would know the volume that's underneath water and therefore you could relate it to the force of buoyancy because you could then maybe find the mass of the object, you could find um, the density of the object. There's all sorts of things you could do to manipulate this. But typically, with floating objects, you're going to focus on mg because typically you would know the weight of that object. All right? So that's going to do it for this one. It's a quick one, but I'm trying to subdivide everything up right here. So that's going to do it. I will see you all on the next one. Bye.